One of my favorite parts about playing and reviewing games is that about once a year, I experience something that I would consider to be one of my favorite games of all time. Be it Celeste and its riveting emotional tale and refined precision platforming, or Persona 5 Royal and its unending charm and visual quality, Fire Emblem Three Houses and the way it uses character as its strongest vehicle, or Yakuza 0 and its mature storytelling and off-the-wall comedy. And this year, the game of choice provided so much minute-to-minute fun that it's impossible to think of this as any less than one of the greatest games I've ever played. Hello Game Roomies, Mustafa here with another episode of the Fabulous Summer 5, in which I'm breaking down the five new games I'm finishing this summer, or I suppose at the time of upload, that I have finished over the course of this summer. I'll be bringing you hot takes to line up with that summer weather, and this happens to be the second episode in this series. So, if you missed the first and my look at Yakuza 6, The Song of Life, feel free to give it a click somewhere on the screen or in the description. Today's game was a special experience, and one that reminds me why I set this goal for myself now over ten years ago. You guys know I love a game that has something to say. Be it philosophy on the world, life, game design, friendship, Whatever the case, each and every game you play should send a message. And no game I've played this year is better at this than the aptly named The Messenger. The Messenger is deceptive from top to bottom, presenting itself as a simple action platformer inspired by the classics like Ninja Gaiden. It has a strong focus on combat, with each screen being presented more as a puzzle room of platforming and battle challenges, rather than the quick skill-based platforming segments in a game like Celeste. A look under the hood, or even a play session lasting more than 15 minutes, will show you as a player that despite what the messenger claims to offer, you're in for something far grander in scale. I've said for years, on the podcast, on my channel, wherever, that indie games will be the future of the industry, not only because they're able to execute their vision with less of the typical corporate noise, but because their lack of dependence on mainstream trends allows them to create dynamic titles less beholden to genre. The Messenger is a marriage of everything that makes platforming action adventures worth playing. It has a quickness to its controls that is almost entirely dependent on your level of skill and experience. Its soundtrack is absolutely transcendent, no other way to describe it. The level design is diverse and the art direction is gorgeous. The game may want you to think its aesthetic is that classic 80s 8-bit like a Ninja Gaiden, but it's showcasing what is undoubtedly the greatest pixel artwork I've ever seen in a video game. To be clear, I don't know that its character designs are necessarily elevated in the same way as other games, but the background work is so detailed that even in an 8-bit game, it can accurately depict the beauty of a serene sunset or a moonlit mountaintop. In addition to great visual presentation, the story is often told through fun and engaging exchanges between characters, and some genuinely hilarious dialogue. I think having a consistent tongue-in-cheek tone can actually grow fairly old pretty quickly in certain games, but because the characterization in The Messenger feels so campy in its execution, there's an underlying sincerity in moments that might be considered over the top in a game that handled this with less precision. The shopkeeper in particular is a standout character, telling you stories at each level with philosophical undertones, offering descriptions of your surrounding area, and even a hint or two every now and again. But he never says a word without delivering that special brand of sass that elevates this game's comedy to a higher level. Of course, a platformer is still a platformer. And so if it doesn't control well, it's never going to reach the upper echelons and stand among the greats like Mega Man X or the aforementioned Celeste. Thankfully, the Messenger has a core mechanic that changes the way you view every facet of the world around you, and it's called Cloud Step. It's a simple idea by design. Every time you attack an object while midair, you refresh your jump allowing you to string together hops across long gaps, avoid enemy projectiles, ascend to new heights, and find secret items, and much, much more. Again, it's truly a simple idea by design, but because of how central combat is to the game, it offers players different ways to approach a given level screen slash area. 
Of course, in addition to the extra height Cloud Step allows you to gain, perhaps what helps to make this game feel so well executed is the way its controls are so masterfully interwoven into your various special abilities. Cloud Step is fundamentally a great idea, but it doesn't require any additional button inputs other than your existing jump button, your sword swing, two moves by the way that you should be pretty well acquainted with by the time you reach the game's third screen, and you'll also earn additional tools, like the energy shuriken, and the balance of these moves allows you to have a sense of control over the landscapes you'll be fighting through. Ah, but even with this set of skills that I would designate as being fairly robust on their own, there are all sorts of gizmos and gadgets to help make platforming more in-depth as the game progresses. There's an item that's eerily close to a traditional grappling hook, though it does go by a different name. There's a wingsuit for gliding, which pairs magnificently with the existing cloud set mechanic, and that's just scratching the surface. Each and every item you encounter changes the dynamic of the world around you, a detail that the game borrows from its Metroidvania cousins, no doubt. On that subject, The Messenger is a bit of a genre bender. I'll be avoiding too many details about this, as I personally consider a lot of this game's surprises to be very interesting in their own right. But you'll find yourself clocking in hours while exploring the gorgeous landscapes and watching as they change and evolve over the course of your adventure. One thing that really sets the Messenger apart is the way all of its levels are so deep and traversable, even prior to accessing all of those alternative moves that I mentioned earlier. I think as long as you have the platforming prowess, you'll find various routes to explore and alternative ways to approach each level. Because of this, I think other games of this type would typically tease you with hints of worlds to come, but the Messenger is especially not like this particularly because you explore most of the game's worlds before you even have the opportunity to revisit certain levels. This helps in creating a sense of familiarity with the levels you'll be exploring. I mean, I've mapped out the game's first stage, Autumn Hill, in my brain. This place is my new 1-1, my new Green Hill Zone, my new Central Highway. Its use of momentum, jumping, slashing, climbing, and of course its culmination in this gorgeous background shot as you scale the side of a wall, watching the moon rise over the mountain. And it indicates to you the sheer quality and scale of the experience that you're about to have. I would say, generally speaking, few things out there compare to a platformer with an absolute banger of a soundtrack, and this one is easily one of the finest I've heard in the genre. Each level is given a strong sense of identity through the music of Red Dragon Eyes, be it the upbeat and fast-paced Autumn Hills theme, the haunting desperation of the catacombs, or the fierce determination of the searing cracks. Persistence is king in this game, and each track reinforces that. I actually think the devs are quite aware of this, because at a certain point, you unlock a jukebox that allows you to shuffle the in-game music on demand. The game's soundtrack has absolutely become my new running music, and it feels glorious. I can't even move on the treadmill these days without feeling like I'm delivering the scroll myself, and that is a testament to some incredibly powerful immersive quality. One of my favorite things about platformers is that even the difficult ones tend to have varied completion criteria. That someone who doesn't consider themselves to be as hardcore as someone else might be can still indulge in some of the explorative elements of this game and challenge themselves in new and interesting ways. The big challenge factor in The Messenger comes from its hidden rooms where players can find power seals. These collectibles contribute towards opening a chest within the shop with an item that will really spice up your gameplay. That said, each of these rooms will offer a challenge far more demanding than any of the game's main stages. This is a nice change of pace, and allows players to indulge in a more focused burst of platforming action over against the long-form structure of the game's individual levels. Risk and reward is a constant in this game, and attention to detail will always be the way to make sure reward is the outcome be it mastering the timing of your jumps, perfecting your slashes, or even learning how to glide for what feels like eternity, you'll notice your mastery of the skill set and develop a sense of confidence as you reach e each new area of the game. Finally, there's my favorite subject to discuss. The Messenger's story starts off simple. 
demons invade the main character's village, and he's tasked with delivering a scroll to the top of a mountain. Clichés, MacGuffins, and prophesized enemies in an 80s-style platformer? Someone was clearly drinking the Square Enix Kool-Aid when they wrote this up. Or so it seems at a glance. Beneath the surface of its premise, The Messenger hides what is without a doubt one of the more surprising stories I've seen in quite a long time. Its use of its mechanics to hide secrets throughout the journey is masterful, and the aha moments you feel when you achieve certain milestones within the game are unparalleled in the genre. I've never seen a game leverage resources like its mechanics and genre to create plot twists out of thin air. Also, as mentioned earlier, the minute-to-minute -minute storytelling is so hilarious and charming, constantly lampshading itself in ways that could feel lazy if not for said careful attention to detail and the subversive nature of the narrative. Characters come off as jaded, to be honest, and not in a way that feels like a bummer. I get that sense that a lot of the humor is meant to distract from some of the shockingly high quality of the philosophical undertones that this game chooses to employ. I doubt you'll find a story here that will rattle your senses in the way some of my previous entries on this channel have, but that doesn't matter, because there's a sinking of ideas here that is so refined that minor story beats feel far more satisfying than they would in a more traditional journey. For those of you more familiar with this game, you might have noticed ways in which I've limited my video here. I've avoided discussing certain subjects and showing certain visual components, and even playing certain music in order to make this as spoiler-free of a review as I possibly could. My reasoning here is very simple. The Messenger is a game that lives in surprise, and offers some of the most exciting ones you'll find this side of the medium. It's because of this that I have to urge you, as the player, to allow yourself this opportunity. Play this game with as little foresight as possible, and watch all of the elements I've discussed converge to create a consistently thrilling gaming experience. So there you have it. A story that keeps you on your toes, twists in genre and plot structure that will leave you speechless, and perhaps, most importantly of all, an attention to detail that makes level design and mechanics feel like one of the most harmonious marriages in the platforming genre. I don't think it's hard to see why I fell in love with this game. The next three summer games have big shoes to fill, because where it stands, this is going to be one of my favorite platformers ever made, and is definitely frontrunner to become my favorite game this summer. Thank you all for tuning in for this review of The Messenger, another indie hit. We've got three games left to go. Who will take the top spot? Which game will drive me mad? Dragon Ball Fighters. Thank you for watching, and come back soon for more from The Game Room.